All right, hey guys, it's Asha. Welcome back to Reading with Toby. Today, I finally am doing my wrap up for the past three months. I tried to film this a couple weeks ago, but my battery died and then I didn't feel like coming back and doing it. <laughs> oh, wrap ups are such a like, oh, you have to be ready to talk for a while. But I have a lot of books. I am going to be wrapping up January, February, and March. Um, and I'm going to try to do it as quickly as possible. Give you guys the highlights and what I liked about it, what I didn't like, and quickly what it's about because I don't want to talk for too long. I have also talked about a lot of these books um, in various vlogs. So I'll tell you if I vlogged about them, if you want to hear more. And then also you can check out my Goodreads, which I leave a quick little review on all the books that I read. So let's go ahead and get started. I am going to talk about one book that I completed the very last day of 2020. And I didn't talk about it in any other videos because I made my December wrap up right before I finished it I believe but I do want to talk about it because I did enjoy it and not a lot of people talk about this book. So the last book that I finished in December 2020 was The Betrayals by Bridget Collins. It is a gorgeous gorgeous book. This is a Waterstones exclusive edition. I mean look at that. Like I had to, I had to, <laughs> it is gorgeous. This book takes place in a boarding school set in the mountains in England. Um, you're not really sure of the time period. Is it in the future? Is it in the past? Is it present day? You don't really know. Um, and at this boarding school, they uh, practice something called the Grand Jeu. What is the Grand Jeu? You never find out, which is a little frustrating, <laughs> but it seems to be something combined with art and music and math and they kind of come up like compose something and they can um, compete using it it's not magic at least you don't think it's never explained but that is where all these boys go to this boarding school so you have that which is set in the past of um in respect to the narrative so you have the past and then you have the same character who you follow in the past in boarding school he comes back um, present day back to the boarding school because his job like um, basically sends him on a hiatus and he has he goes to this boarding school they kind of just like send him there and, and like ship him off there because they don't know what to do with him so he goes back to the boarding school and he's just kind of trying to figure out life you have the perspective of a woman who is the teacher there and it's a big deal because usually the grand jeu is only meant for men and boys and then you have another character's perspective of a young girl who is living in the walls of the boarding school and no one knows about her it was really interesting you don't really know what the grand jeu is what the point of it is but to me it didn't really take it away I guess the author just that just isn't the point of the book she just wanted to make something a little bit more complicated and interesting at this boarding school but at its core it's just a love story and it was really interesting there is like this mystery trying to find out what hap what is happening the female professor and um the man who comes back they are trying to figure out this mystery and i really enjoyed it i only give it three out of five stars but i really liked it there's like a plot twist in it the setting of the school was done really well. I just love books set like with an academia setting. I wouldn't say this is dark academia. Um, it's just set at a boarding school, which I always love. So I do think a lot of people would like this. It was a nice love story. I loved the scenes of them set in the past of the boarding school because I think I just love school settings. So I really enjoyed this and I definitely wanted to check out the rest of her. Or she has another book that she came out, her first book called the binding which also sounds kind of similar kind of strange maybe a little bit of magical element um so yes i really i liked it three stars all right so now we're going to move into january january is historically one of my worst reading months i don't know why i only read two books in january and i always tend to read very few books in january so i only got to two the first book that i read in january was a Close in Common Orbit by Becky Chambers. I have read the first book in this sort of companion series called The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet. And this book takes place right after that book, but you don't necessarily have to read them in order, I don't think. Um, this one you are following an AI and she used to be an AI of a large spaceship, the spaceship that actually was in the first book. But something happens and now she has to be put into like a human droid so now she's just like stuck with only being able to see what a human can see and she's not used to being able to 
she's used to being able to see everything at once she can only gather information from what she sees you know within her peripheral vi vision which is an interesting idea and she goes to this strange new planet and there is a girl that kind of takes her in and um they kind of have a found family aspect to this and there's a love story you find out the past about the girl that takes her in her dark past and yeah becky chambers just writes really wholesome diverse um easy to read science fiction i really really love becky chambers i'm going to read everything she ever publishes and on here it says a charming story of love and friendship which i definitely agree this was really great i gave this four out of five stars the Next and last book that I read in January, I did do a reading vlog for, so I will link that down below. I won't talk much about it because it's also a well-loved book on booktube. That's The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab, who is one of my favorite authors. I absolutely love this, just like everyone else. I love Addie LaRue. I thought she was such an interesting character, everything that she had to go through. I loved Henry. I love the darkness. I love all their relationships. I just thought this was so good. I love the writing. Everything about this was amazing. I see why everyone loves it. I love it too. And I would definitely reread it. And also, I think this is, has been um, picked up, right, to be adapted because this was this is going to make a really great movie or TV, whichever one they decide to use. But yes, I don't really have anything else to add to it. I loved it just as much as everyone else. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to get into February. Now, that was so long ago. I don't remember the order of the books that I read these. So I'm just going to... Kind of put them in some sort of order. February, I picked up Last Away by Darcy Little Badger. This is actually a YA novel, and it the premise caught my eye, caught my attention because I don't read a lot of YA. It's usually not my thing, but I really enjoyed this. This is following a 17-year-old indigenous girl. She is from the Lapan Apache, yeah, uh, family, and in this world, there it's like set in our present day, but you have vampires and ghosts and um she can raise the dead into ghosts and her power is something that is um taught throughout her family so you get stories of her past and her grandmothers and her great great grandmother and her great 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 grandmother who had this power and how it's all interconnected and at its core it's a murder mystery she finds out that her cousin was murdered and she's trying to find out who and to get revenge not necessarily get revenge but get uh, justice that's the better word she's trying to get justice for it and while i was reading it i didn't really like the writing and I thought that the main character was written really young like I thought she was 14 13 14 until they said that she was 17 I was like oh she's 17 okay it was written really young but when I finished the book I love the overall story and what the author was trying to do so I don't know if that, if that makes sense like while I was reading it I was like uh like the writing just wasn't didn't work for me oh I just realized this upside down the writing did it really work for me but i love the overall story and the message of it and i just love what the author was trying to do like basically she wasn't she was basically taking back her people's narrative and saying like a, another indigenous person is not going to die and be erased and no justice and then have no justice so she was like taking it back letting this girl um find the white man who killed him and get revenge or get justice for it so i loved it i love that aspect i thought it was really cool the scene with the vampire if you read this book where her and her mom are in the car and the vampire and the mom does something to the vampire i was like that was brilliant i love that aspect of it but yes i definitely recommend i only gave it i ended up giving it three out of five stars but like i said since finishing it i thought it was really great so it's maybe more like a four star read yeah, I liked it a lot. I definitely, I want to give this to my littlest brother who is 13. I think he'll really like this. I want to give it to him so he can read it. Yes, we have that one. Okay, next is another book that is big on booktube, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it. And I do have a reading vlog where I talk about it a little bit. That is The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. I really love this. I gave this four to five stars. I also <laughs> have all the same feelings as everyone else. It was just so heartwarming, so charming, so sweet. I love all the magical youths in here. All these magical youths are set in an orphanage and a social worker comes to see what's going on and a love story ensues not only with another man but he also like falls in love with all the children 
and you have the found family. And this was just so great. I see why everyone loves it. If you're in a reading slump and you haven't picked this up, this is the book. <laughs> All right, so the other book that I read in February was actually a classic, and that was The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. I have this beautiful penguin cloth-bound edition. So I love these, but if you have these, or you're thinking about getting them, these do not travel well because the paint um, gets uh, scratched off easily. So don't travel with these. Just now I, I have a note to myself. <laughs> but yes, I really enjoyed this. Um, I ended up giving it four out of five stars. Again, I think a lot of people know what this is about. It was a lot, a lot darker than I thought. The writing was amazing. And there's so many quotes in here that I want to write down that I need to go add to my reading journal. Like some of the quotes were amazing. And of course, I love the overall themes that everyone knows about this. Like it was just, it was just so good. And I think I don't know if this has ever been adapted, but this would make such a cool movie. I just think it would be such a cool film because of like, you could have a really cool style, but have it like dark and edgy. And for some reason, I feel like David Fincher would be a really good um, director for this. I don't know, I just kept imagining so many cool scenes and how this would be a, an amazing film. So has this ever been made into a movie? I need to see. But I really liked it and I see why people loved it and it's their favorite classic of all time. It was really, really good. And like I said, a little way darker than I thought, but I really liked it. All right, the last, oh, I'm getting through this. I'm happy because I didn't want to talk for too long. <laughs> the last two books I have to talk about for February are the ones that I read for Blackathon. So the first one that I got to was Rosewater by Tate Thompson. This was for the prompt to read a book, a sci-fi with uh, first contact with aliens. So I chose this one and this takes place in a town called Rosewater in Nigeria and this dome alien dome appeared and no one knows what it does what goes on inside but periodically I think like once a year I could be wrong but periodically it will open up and if you are near the dome it will heal anything in your body so a little town um, people start to live outside the dome and that's called Rosewater. You're following this guy who is a, oh my gosh, what is he called? A sensitive. Yeah, so he can like find lost objects. So he ends up working for the government. He is like, becomes, a, when he's younger, he's a thief because he's able to sense lost things. And like I said, he works for the government and he kind of gets involved in this government conspiracy thing. And there's a big mystery aspect to it. It's at action-packed like it is fast-paced even though it's a thick science fiction it's like over 400 pages it is constantly moving constant action scenes the main character is not likable at all but he's one of those main characters that's not likable but like it's kind of funny to read from his perspective his perspective because he's so just like ridiculous <laughs> but yeah i really like this a lot i especially love the ending when the author was like bringing all the pieces together and you see like how something at the beginning fits in towards the end and just how it all came together. I really loved it. And I cannot wait to read the rest of the series because this, this is a trilogy. So I really like this and I definitely recommend if you're looking for your next sci-fi. The last book that I have that I read for Blackathon was Lakewood by Megan Giddings. This is a like medical thriller horror and you are following a girl in college who is um, who kind of gets involved in this clinical trial. Oh, I was looking for this bookmark. <laughs> who gets involved in this clinical trial because if you partake in the clinical trial, you will get a ton of money and she needs this money because her mom is really sick. So she needs this money to try to take care of her mother because her grandma dies. Um, so this clinical trial, it is horrifying what happens to her, all these weird experiments and they think something weird is going on because all of the people involved in the clinical trial or people of color, I think, except for like one person is white, but all the scientists who are conducting the experiments are all white people. And it, and they're in this weird town called Lakewood. You don't really know what's going on because everyone in the town is also white, except for one person who is black, who is also involved in the clinical trials. So yeah, it was really like, some parts were so strange and out there and because she was like involved in the experiments and it was just kind of like a fever dream. You didn't know what was happening. But then it would like switch to these like normal scenes and she's just walking around the town and thinking about her life. And those scenes were kind of like so, like so normal that it kind of took me out of the story, if that makes sense at all, because then it just suddenly got so slow and you're just like, it was like these really wild intense scenes and then this like really slow scenes. So I don't know, it didn't quite 
um, hit the like horror mark as in her writing. I'm trying to, I've been trying to figure out how to explain this. Like what is happening to her and how it's a, I'm trying to start a conversation about all of the terrible medical experiments that have been done on black people in America and like seeing what's happening to her is horrifying and that in itself is horror. But like the actual writing, like her actual writing didn't make me feel horrified if that makes sense. Like I had to like really put myself in her situation to feel horrified. But you know, like you read certain books and just like reading it, you like your skin starts crawling. So that was what was lacking for me. So I ended up giving this three out of five stars. I still thought it was great. And the scenes with what was happening to her was, was like horrible and scary and like really interesting. And some scenes really made you think, <laughs> or it really made me think, but yeah, three out of five stars. I'll definitely check out their, this was her debut novel. So I think feel like with her next one, her writing will improve even more. So I'll definitely check out her other work. So yes. All right. So now March, March, I read another five books. Yes. March was another actually really great reading month in March. So let's get started. The first book though, wasn't that great. <laughs> The first book that I read in March was The Lost Apothecary by Sarah Pinner. So this was a anticipated release. The premise sounded amazing. You are following this woman in the 19th century, 18th century, just kidding, the 18th century. And she is a secret apothecary. She dispenses poisons to women who want to kill men. It can be their husbands, their brothers, friends, whoever they want, but she only Will give the poisons to women to kill men not kill other women don't or anything like that just for women to kill men so you have her perspective set in the past and then you also have the perspective of a woman in current day who travels to london because this takes place in england who travels to london after she finds out her husband is cheating on her and she kind of gets wrapped up in the whole world of this apothecary so i thought that this was like fine it wasn't a bad book or anything it just was not for me it's very light as light as you can get with this kind of storyline but didn't the premise just sound like perfection oh my gosh and then it just did not quite beat my expectations i wish it was darker i wish that we just stayed in the 18th century like that would have been amazing and oh oh my gosh i just feel like the perspective of the woman in present day was completely unnecessary because she is kind of discovering this lost apothecary and it's like a mystery to her and trying to discover what's happening but because you get the perspective of the past you already know what's happening so you are just reading about her figuring it out but you already know so it's not like a mystery to the reader it's a mystery to the character in the book and that to me is so boring <laughs> it just seemed pointless to me i didn't like that at all i just love the aspects set in the 18th century and I wish she went further with it, darker with it. Like this would be such a cool, if someone took this idea and made it into a dark fantasy and it was like a potion maker or like a witch and she did this, oh my gosh, this would be incredible. So I need someone else to take this premise <laughs> and make it a darker book. But yeah, this wasn't bad or anything. I could see people, I could see people liking this. This would be like the perfect book to take with you on vacation. It was like engaging. I read it in like a day. I mean, it's really short. It's not bad or anything. It's just, I just want it more. I gave this two out of five stars. I don't know if I said that. All right, after that, I picked up a collection of short stories. This is Daddy by Emma Klein. I was highly anticipating this because she wrote a book called The Girls, which I absolutely loved. And I've been waiting for her to write another book. So this was really weird and it wasn't quite it for me. I ended up giving this three out of five stars. It has a total of 10 short stories in here. And how are they all connected? I have no idea. That is a great question. I was trying to figure that out myself, <laughs> but yeah, um, let's see. These are very much where you are just dropped into someone's life. They are going through some sort of hard time. They're all, all characters are all very sad and they're all dealing with something and sometimes you don't even know what because it's not really i guess that's not the point to her the point is just you just get dropped in and you are experiencing what they're experiencing right here and now and then you're just taken out again um it's really weird it was very strange i loved her writing like i love her writing her writing is incredible but i think for me personally i prefer her like longer form novels so i hope she comes out with a another novel like her short stories just just aren't it for me like they weren't bad but 
I prefer her longer novels, so there is that one. Uh, let's see, what did I read next? I think next I picked up Luster by Raven Leilani. This was incredible. I gave this five out of five stars. So in this book, you are following a young 23-year-old black woman named Eddie. It's set in present day. She's in New York City. She has a job in publishing. She ends up getting involved with an older married white man, but this uh, white man dis and his wife have like an open relationship. And um, it turns out that this older man and woman have a recently adopted a black daughter and Eddie like accidentally gets involved in their, in everyone's lives, the wife, the husband, the daughter. And yeah, it's really, it's a really weird premise, but it really is just following this girl being 23, trying to like figure out life, not being very, like not knowing what to do with life, being very dysfunctional, like her mom wasn't around, her dad wasn't around, and she was just never really taught the skills of how to handle life, so she's just trying to figure it out. And I thought it was so, so good, because it really is just sums up what it's like to be like a young 20-something, with like traumatic past trying to figure it out but then also has touches of her being a black woman i don't know i just thought it was excellent the writing was incredible um like it almost felt stream of consciousness so you really felt like eddie really felt like a real character like i feel like she's still up there in new york city <laughs> figuring out life like there was one scene where her and the guy that she starts dating they do like ecstasy or cocaine, it wasn't said, but they do some sort of stimulant. And then they go out in the club and the writing really felt like you were she, you were like in her brain, like super um, hyper and, and like high. And I literally had to put the book down because I literally felt like, I felt all her like, she was like super anxious and just like going from this and this, 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 like that. And I literally had to put the book down because I was like, oh my God, I need a break from your brain where you are right now. So I just felt like everything she was feeling, this was incredible. It was shortlisted for the, or it was longlisted for the Women's Prize for Fiction. And I hope it gets shortlisted. This was really great. I definitely recommend. The next book I did do a whole reading vlog for, so I won't talk much about it. I will link it down below if you want to hear more of my thoughts. But this is 50 Words for Rain by Asha Lemmy. This is a historical fiction novel, and this was so good. I ended up giving this four out of five stars. You are following a young girl named Noriko who is mixed race. It's set in Japan right at the start of World War II, and she is half Japanese, half black. Her mom fell in love with a, a, a black American, um, but she never met her dad. And at the beginning of the book, her mom drops her, drops her off at her grandparents' house and leaves her there. And because she is mixed race and um, her mother like dishonored the family, they keep Noriko up in the attic and give her acid baths to try to lighten her skin. And because of this, Noriko never really felt um, connected or like she belonged to her. Japanese family even though she never knew any part of her black like her black side her American side any other side So she feels fully Japanese, but she's not accepted in Japan. She's not accepted by her grandparents um, But then her half brother comes to live with them and they form a really sweet friendship and he takes care of her and um, Yeah, you follow Nariko throughout her whole life of trying to find herself and deal with everything that she went through as a young girl and it was just so great. It was just such a good story. And I think so many people would love this book. Oh, I wish that more people read it. I really think if that sounds good to you, you should check it out. It was so good. It was so engaging. And it's just a well-told, well-written, great story about friendships and um, family and trying to belong. Oh, I just loved it so much. I think more people need to read it. I definitely recommend it. Check it out. Go read it. I'm, I need to like get more people to read this book because I really think everyone would love it so love this the last book that i have to talk about is i think is my favorite book so far of the year i thought it was perfection and that was burnt sugar by avini doshi this book was so good it was so weird so dark strange and i loved it so much <laughs> so you are following antara uh, in present day as her mom is dealing with, with some sort of uh, degenerative brain disease it's never named what it is but it's like Alzheimer's where she's losing her memory and the daughter is kind of trying to handle 
not wanting to really take care of her mom because she felt like her mom was never really there for her, gave her a terrible childhood, but of course it's her mom so she feels like she does want to take care of her but she's just dealing with the struggle with that her mom did all these terrible things to her but now she like doesn't even remember doing all these terrible things to her so she has to take care of her and she's sitting here dealing with all this like trauma and guilt and everything else that the mom gave her but now the mom is like doesn't have to deal with it because she doesn't even remember if that makes sense so you get that um perspective and then you go back in the past and you see like what the mom did like the mom joined this the mom got married but she didn't want to be married anymore so she took her daughter and they went and joined this cult and you just kind of see what the mom did and how it affected the daughter and yeah it was just it was so good it's so dark <laughs> i loved it so much the writing was incredible Everything that the daughter was going through, it was like a lot. And the mom was so intense. Their relationship is so interesting. It's just such an interesting study. I don't know, I just loved it. I loved it so much. I thought it was so great. And I definitely recommend it. I really want to reread it and like annotate it. That's how much I loved it. I just thought it was brilliant. But it was brilliant, brilliant study about motherhood and relationships. It was so good. <laughs> yes, this was shortlisted for the Booker Prize last year. It is currently long listed for the Women's Prize for Fiction. I hope it gets shortlisted. I hope both of these, I hope both of these get shortlisted for, um, for it. So yeah, that's the last book. I gave this five out of five stars. I don't know if I said, whoo. All right, guys. So there we go. Those were all the books that I read in January, February, and March. Hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if any of these you want to read now, or if you read any of them, let me know your thoughts and I will catch you guys in my next one. Bye.